everybody. Welcome to our next edition of Imagine Your Art. We did Van Gogh last week. This week we're looking at Roy Lichtenstein. This is our solution to not being able to have programs in the library. Hopefully you're picking up your grab-and-go bags with the materials for these projects. Um, if not, you're still welcome to join along with us. There are things that you can use at home to make these projects work as well. Okay, so today Roy Lichtenstein. He was born in 1923 and he died in 1997, so he's fairly recent. Uh, he is an American pop artist who loved cartoons in big, bold, bright colors and lines. You will we'll look at some of his art. Um, he's also influenced by advertisements and by comic books. So I am wearing my Wonder Woman t-shirt today because it is influenced by Roy Lichtenstein's style the big bright, bold bright colors and lots of dots and lines. So celebrating comics today. Um, he also went to Ohio State University so that's interesting. He does have some Ohio ties. All right so let's look first at a couple of the books before we do our project. Uh, this book is called Make It Pop and it has a lot of pop artists in it like Andy Warhol and Jasper Johns. It also has Roy Lichtenstein. This is one of the books that you can get at the library. You could even call and request it if you wanted to while we're closed. Uh, so in this book, get a little bit about the artist um, and his style, like the cartoons and comic books and advertisements that he preferred to use as inspiration. Uh, so there's a little bit about him, a little bit about some of his artwork, and then there are projects in here that you could try yourself. This one is finding an advertisement in the newspaper or magazine and then turning it into a Roy Lichtenstein style piece of art. And this one is finding some of our favorite um, cartoon characters. Like I believe that's SpongeBob SquarePants that they turned into a Roy Lichtenstein uh, piece of art. So there are lots of fun ideas in this book. And then we also have a book about him. You can see he looks like he's sitting in one of his own pieces of art. Um, this one is by Luann Walker, and it's all about how he comes up with his ideas for his art projects, a lot about his studio and his techniques. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about the size of some of his projects. So here he is right here. This is a painting that he's working on, and there's another one in his studio. So these artworks are really quite large, a lot larger than they look in books and in magazines. So he works big. Um, here's another picture of him. There he is right here, working on a living room, just like this one it looks like. So really big pieces of art that he's working on. And you can see also his style. Let's share a couple other pictures, like this one. If you look closely, you'll see her face has a lot of dots. So Lichtenstein liked to experiment with cartoon styles, but also comic strip styles. And if you look in the newspapers, especially old newspapers, the comic strips are made up with little tiny dots, and they're called bende dots. And it was a way for newspapers to add color to their comic strips. Just four different colored inks that they were working with. Um, the same ones we see in a lot of our printers, the cayenne, the magenta, the yellow, and the black. Mixing all of those colors in certain ways by overlapping little dots is how they got a variety of colors. So we see a lot of dots in Lichtenstein's work. Also very thick, dark black lines and a lot of bold colors. That is one of his. Oh, here's another. He also uses words in a lot of his art. You don't see that in a lot of artworks. Uh, this one is one of his famous paintings. It's called Wham. You can see, if you can really look closely at it, there's a fighter pilot over here and blowing up another plane over here. So a war picture. But they also looking closely at it, tiny, tiny little dots. That's how he's getting that color. So lots of bold 
colors, lots of dark lines, and lots of dots. And one more picture to look at. This one is a living room. Um, you can see these are mirrors reflecting what is in the living room. Lots of bold stripes, lots of colors, and lots of dots, again, for Lichtenstein. So he is an interesting pop artist. Large works, lots of dots, lots of bold lines. So what we're going to do today is take our grab-and-go bag, take a look at what's in it. We have a Lichtenstein picture that you can color on your own if you want to practice. It also gives you some idea of his style that you can work with when you're creating your own. Uh, we have paper that you can use to design your own art project. What else is in here? Oh yeah. We have lots of little dots that you can use to color in your picture. We also have some really big dots that you can use to color in big parts of your picture. And crayons to make your bold lines or bold stripes. Uh, we have some paint that you can use. This paint is the same kind of paint we used with Van Gogh when you mixed it with flour and salt and water. You can also mix it with just water. And we start with just a little bit of water, stir it up to the thickness that you want to use on your picture. We also have Q-tips, those are for painting with, and little cups that you can use to put the paint in. So put a little bit of your powder paint in there, add a little bit of water and stir it up to your paint. I've already done that. So I have some orange and I have some red over here. It doesn't take much paint on these pictures. We also have bubble wrap and you can use bubble wrap to make circles, so I'll show you how to do that. And we have, of course, instructions. So it gives you some idea of who Lichtenstein was and some of the things you can do with your artwork. So I do have a sample that I started on my page, and I decided to do a word, because words are pretty big and pretty bold, and I'm not a very good artist when it comes to drawing people. So I didn't want to try one of his people, like Wonder Woman, but you could make a Wonder Woman if you were interested in doing a person. Um, or you could do something in your house, like he did paint different objects, like his living room. Right? So find something that you would like to paint or draw a picture of. Um, keep in mind that he does use a lot of simple lines. You don't have to make it very detailed drawing. Um, so you could do something like pop. I decided to do something like read. So I have read written out here and just some lines going off of it for my practice picture. So what I would do is take a pencil, draw out what it is you would like to create. If you want to use a word, if you want to do a living room, if you want to do a person or a superhero, if you have a favorite superhero, or if you have a favorite cartoon character, whatever it is you'd like to do, draw it out and then I would take a dark crayon or a marker and just outline the whole thing. Nice dark color. So I'm going to do that real quick and just because he did use a lot of thick bold black lines in his work. If you look at the book it shows exactly how he does that. He uses actually tape to tape off his lines and then he goes back and fills in those lines with thick black paint and he's also very careful with his brush, brush strokes when he's painting because he doesn't want to see lines last week we did Van Gogh and we saw his nice thick lines and um, Lichtenstein doesn't do that he does very smooth painting and we don't see a lot of movement in his work like we did in Van Gogh's. So I have some thick lines that now I can fill in. This one says read. And I might decide to do, well, how about some big dots for some of the big sections? I'm just gonna fill in this section with dots. 
I could color it first with crayon and then add dots if I wanted color behind it. So let's see. Big dots for big space. Big dots. I'm going to do it. Um, I could do the little dots. And that would be the same way, just filling in a space with little dots. And they are just peel and stick. Of course, you can do several pictures. Maybe do one with lots of stickers. Maybe do another one with paint. Or mix them. I'm going to mix mine and do paint and stickers. Okay. So, little dots to fill in another area. Those look a little bit more like the Ben Day dots that Winston Stein used. It. I used, um, we could make dots with the Q-tip. So let's give it some orange dots. And that works fairly well. Or, you might use paint on your bubble wrap. You could cut pieces out of your bubble wrap if you would want to use small pieces. I don't have my scissors here, so I'm just gonna use a corner and I'm gonna put it in this corner on my picture. So what I would do, and you might wanna make sure you're wearing old clothes and put something on your table to protect it when you do this with the paint. But just Put some paint right on top of your bubble wrap. It doesn't even look like it's going to be anything that great. Doesn't look like there's much paint on there, is there? But if you just put some on there and press it down on your paper, it still fills in. There's more paint on that plastic wrap than it looks, so it doesn't take a whole lot. And it does get some dots more interesting texture. Um, so practice with that on one of your papers if you want to use those. You can cut out different shapes. Um, you can cut out shapes to fit into your design. Just test it out and see what you think. Um, so that's fairly easy. You can take your paint also and your Q-tips and fill in. in your letters or other big sections of your picture. The Q-tip works pretty well. See, it fills it right in. All right. Or you can use crayons or markers and do some solid areas on your design too. all different kinds of ways you can fill in your picture. The idea though is the bold outlines, lots of dots, lots of strong colors. Like you can even give it some stripes. So all different kinds of ways that you can fill in your picture. So have fun with it, practice, and when you come up with the creation that you actually love, My sample creation. Um, when you come up with something that you love, take a picture of it and email it to us at ysstaff at fcdlibrary.org. Um, the directions are on here. Or put a copy of it down in our comments. That works. You can see it's on uh, YouTube or on our Facebook. Well, our Facebook right today. Add it to the comments and we're going to put together a virtual art show. Uh, since we can't do Art Walk this year, um, it's being postponed till October, I think. Not in July, at any rate. Uh, we still would like to do an art show, so go ahead and email us. We would love to include you in our virtual art show. Have fun, and we'll see you soon.